So it's well after midnight here at the Mayo Civic Center. We still do not have an endorsement for the U.S. Senate. Uh, Jeff, what time did you get here today? Uh, nine. Nine o'clock, and I, I can see that you're a Chris Stolberg supporter. Uh, Where are you from? Uh, Princeton, Minnesota. So you came all the way from Princeton, Minnesota to Rochester for this endorsement. and. We're past 12 hours here. Are you feeling delirious? Are you feeling tired, energized? Uh, I'm used to getting up early. I went and worked out before I got in the car, came down. So, uh, yeah, it's been a long day. <laughs> so one of the uh, things that Chris Dahlberg uh, talked about in his speech was he, he talked about how he was is endorsed by Congressman Chip Kravak, who oh, yeah. made a historic run against Overstar, defeating him. Uh, do you think there's similarities between what Chris Dahlberg could do in the U.S. Senate against Al Franken and what Chip Kravak did uh, against Congressman Oberstar? Oh yeah, anytime we can uh, you know, get some of those solid Democrat votes from the range to go our way, I mean, that's uh, Chip Kravak worked that really hard. I never thought I'd ever you know, see o Oberstar gone. Oberstar had been in Washington since before I was born, and I helped out a little bit on the Chip Kravak campaign, and, and, uh, and still I, I knew it was a long shot. But uh, if, if uh, Dahlberg can take Duluth, you know, I mean, obviously it's only one-seventh of St. Louis County, but still, you know, I've got, he's got the name recognition and, and people know that he's doing a good job up there. Because those, those people, they are actually relatively conservative. It's just that, you know, they're, that they've got a tradition of being Democrats. But that is starting to fade. <laughs> so, you know, Republicans have uh, typically not done very well in the Iron Range in, in that district. And uh, I'm just wondering, do you guys feel that um, the Republican candidates that are put up for statewide office, that they don't fit the mold of the 8th district? Or, or what's your opinion on that? Well, up on the 8th, I mean, there is a growing split between the the union uh, say the government employees unions uh, government union employees and the uh, private sector union employees especially with uh, you know with polymet I mean they, they've they've seen Democrats promise time and time again oh we're gonna study it and we're gonna see if if we can get mining going again and yet that's all they do is study it you know and and they you know they they've, they're sick of it up there they need jobs it's a great place to live but if you don't have jobs you can't live up there <laughs> So we're hey everybody, thanks out there. <laughs> Minnesota Republicans, let's get it done. Listen, you haven't been here warming up your seats. You're looking to endorse a candidate you can get behind that you know can beat Al Franken, right? I told you I gave my age yesterday, I'm 52 years old. Well, I, I got involved with the Republican Party when I was 16 years old, so I'm not new to this. I understand what it's like to be on your side. Thank you. God bless you for staying up till 2 in the morning. I remember that ballot till 14 ballots. But we only win as a party. I've been clear about this. I will abide by the endorsement. No gray issues. You make the decision. I honor you. But you know what? I'm not alone on this. There's some other people who honor you. You remember all the people I've been working on this campaign, my fellow candidates? Yesterday I had young Philip Parrish. Wasn't he exceptional? Wow! And Monty Marino, huh? He's a fireball. And Senator Julianne Orman. What an exceptional woman. What an exceptional leader. You know what they all said? Let's abide by the process and I honor it. You haven't heard me on this campaign trail saying, you know what, I love you, I want the endorsement, but by the way, I'm going to the primary. We have to do this. Let's raise the issue right now up front. Some people said it's all about the money. Well, you know what? Politi the political graveyards have been filled with campaigns where they thought it was all about the money. But without being right on the issues and the right candidate, we're going to lose and we're going to have Al Franken for six years. You know I can take it to him in northeastern Minnesota. And I'm getting the support across the state. 
I'm getting elected officials, whether it's in Winona, down in Blue Earth, all the way up in Lake County, over all the way in the St. Cloud. We can do this. And so we're going to be able to do this. And you know on the money issue, I actually had a hit piece put out against me yesterday. You know what it said? Stanley Hubbard of Hubbard Broadcasting is my finance chair. <laughs> well, I can't be doing too bad if that's the case, right? But here's the issue. There's other people besides myself and the candidates that respect this process. And they are waiting until you endorse to put the money behind. So let's get that done. You know I'm a constitutional conservative. I say respect the Fourth Amendment. NSA shouldn't be spying on private citizens. Absolute repeal of Obamacare. Sanctity of life. And the government has no business getting involved in my religious faith. And you know what? I'll say it again. The Second Amendment sentence reads like this. The right to bear arms shall not be infringed. Period. No question mark. And I watched the candidate who's bought into the liberal gun show loophole or said we need expanded background checks and change their position. If they change their position in six months, what's going to happen with the pressure of Washington, D.C. in six years? Listen, I got the energy and the experience and the ideas to do this. I've got the ideas, you know, they recognize me on the St. Louis County Board, they gave me their chairmanship. I know the issues. Not only will I answer the questions, but I can answer the questions. I have the experience as the only one in this race who's ran in solidly democratic areas. And you know, when I ran for re-election, I actually boosted my vote count when I had the Democratic Party and the AFSCME Government Employees Union breathing down my neck. And how also do I do it? Energy. You see, I got a little energy. And recently we were on the road with a four-day road trip, 17 cities. And you know, we didn't, we didn't buy our own road crew. We were the road crew. These were the road crews. So we're going to do this, but let's honor the process. First ballot, give me your endorsement. Let's get it done. And then let's get a governor candidate. And let's have a party united. Thank you. Minnesota. As you can tell, I might have been speaking a little bit yesterday, but I'm a fighter, and I'll fight for each and every one of you. And I'm running for the U.S. Senate because we can do better. We have to do better. It's come to my attention that in these events, sometimes people pass out literature that might not be correct. So I want you to know, each and every one of you, that I am absolutely a strong supporter of the Second Amendment. And I am strong on life. Not only am I pro-life, I've lived it. The other thing, I like to win. I am the candidate, undoubtedly, without an exception, that will be Al Franken. Because I have the message, and I have the passion, and we have the organization. And as my dad always said, and God bless his soul, show me the money. We've proven that we can raise the resources to be Al Franken. We need to send people to Washington that will believe what we believe. We believe that America is the greatest country in the world. But that it's, our government has gotten too big and too intrusive. We believe that our Founding Fathers were correct, that rights come from God, not government. 
We believe in a limited government that is defined by the Constitution, not an imperial president. We believe in a culture of life, that every life is precious from the womb to the last breath and has to be protected. We believe that $17 trillion of debt is immoral and that Washington is bankrupting our country. We believe that Obamacare is wrong and has to be stopped. And finally, we believe that Al Franken needs to be sent home. Wherever that may be, California or New York, I don't think he's coming to Minnesota. You know what we have forgotten to believe? We have forgotten to believe how to win in this state. And I'm tired of it, and you're tired of it, and we're tired of it. Together, we, us, will beat out Franken. We will crush him. I need you, and you, and you, and you, and you, together. We will win. God bless you. God bless Minnesota. And God bless America. So we're lucky enough to be with U.S. Senate candidate Chris Dahlberg, who's also been a guest on the Tony Hernandez show. Chris, uh, what are you feeling right now? You got to be, we're on the sixth ballot. Are you feeling excited, optimistic? Oh, yeah. Well, you're always nervous, I think. You just want, you, you want to get the endorsement, and we got a ways to go, so we got to keep working this, and we got, uh, I guess, 16 points to go. So. Well, I got to say that your supporters in the 8th District, they certainly are loyal. You see the blue Dahlberg for U.S. Senate shirts. Uh, it seems like everybody in the 8th Congressional District is supporting you. It is, and then we, but we got a lot of good pockets. You know, St. Cloud, I really developed some good friendships also in the Twin Cities. Uh, so we got them all throughout the state, the 1st Congressional, the 7th Congressional District. So uh, we've built a pretty good organization. Uh, about a week and a half ago, I went on a four-day, 17-city trip. And so that was a lot of fun and we just met a lot of great people and we're going to continue working it so chris dalberg thanks for your time absolutely we're looking forward to being back on your show again yeah, thanks best wishes. thanks tony the results from the sixth ballot were just announced it's about 12 30. looks like dalberg is ahead 54 percent mike mcfadden got 46 percent we're going into the seventh ballot we're going to see what happens you can just feel the suspense in the air who's going to get endorsed by the Republican Party to run against Al Franken in November. They're reading the seventh ballot results right now. Dallas, if we can put this in the background so we can see them. This is exciting. We're going to find out if a U.S. Senate candidate is endorsed to run against Al Franken. Dahlberg, 54%. McFadden with 744, 44%. Basically, identical results from the last ballot. We don't have an endorsed candidate yet. I think they're going to another ballot. I'm not quite sure it's going to make a difference at this point. I think the, the people who are voting right now are, are resolved on who they're voting for. Okay, so uh, welcome, thanks for coming this morning. Uh, this morning, I'm announcing that I'm running in the Republican primary. Let me tell you why. To make life better for all Minnesotans, we need a governor with a clear, optimistic, forward-looking vision for our state. And between now and Election Day, I'm gonna continue to explain how an honor administration will make life better for all Minnesotans. We'll continue to help Minnesotans find a job, earn more, keep more of what they earn, educate their kids, make sure that they have a chance to receive quality health care and save for retirement. All things important to us. Now I think the Republican Party desperately needs an infusion of optimism 
and a much more solutions-oriented approach. We've lost several general elections in a row by telling people what we're against. Now, rather than repeating a failed strategy, I'm going to talk about how and why our Republican conservative principles work for everyone. My approach is different because I've spent my life in the private sector, getting things done. Um, the <coughs> reason I'm, I'm running with Scott Honor is two years ago when I was elected to the Minnesota Senate, I was so excited to get in there and get my hands dirty and get, get a lot of work done and get good things done for the people of my district and of the state. And what happened after a couple of years is I, I, being in the minority, the House, Senator, House, Senate, and Governor, all being Democrat, it was a little frustrating in that you couldn't get, I couldn't get everything done that I wanted to get done. So I, I focused on doing really good things for my district. When session was over this year, I thought, what, what can I do to really help this state? Because I didn't want to go through another two years in the minority like that. So I, I thought, well, I'll look at who our gubernatorial candidates are and see which ones I can help, or who can I help, or who's, who's, who, which horse in this race am I going to pick? So going on about uh, four to five hours of sleep, many of us here, day two at the Republican Party of Minnesota State Convention. We still didn't get a U.S. Senate endorsement. Those are going to be the first votes that people are going to make. Just to recap, the two finalists for the endorsement are businessman Mike McFadden and St. Louis County Commissioner Chris Dahlberg. Currently, Chris Dahlberg is ahead by a few hundred votes. Today's a new day, though. After the U.S. Senate endorsement, we are going to be endorsing the next Minnesota governor uh, candidate to run against Mark Dayton. And so it's going to be a long day. There's a whole new crop of people here, people who only showed up on Saturday. So that's going to influence the final numbers in some way. I don't know exactly how. All we can do is observe, see what's happening. I'll keep you informed. Stay tuned. Good morning, Minnesota. Here we are live at the Mayo Civic Center in Rochester, Minnesota. It's day two of the Republican Party State Convention. Some exciting things went on. You see a lot of people walking around with droopy eyes. People were up till 2, 2.30 in the morning trying to endorse our U.S. Senate candidate. There's two candidates left, uh, Mike McFadden and Chris Dahlberg. We just cast our eighth ballot. And uh, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman endorsed Mike McFadden and a big uh, piece of literature went out to the floor. So that may or may not have an influence on the vote count. Uh, we're here with Abdi Oscar. He is a Minnesota State House Representative candidate. You may recognize him because he has been on the Tony Hernandez show before. Abdi, it's uh, great to see you here. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, here. it was great having you on the show. And how, how's the campaign going so far? You're doing some work already, aren't you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We started in a knocking doors, and uh, we uh, mailed the literature review, and I uh, did a lot of interviews, and talking to the parents, talking to the teachers, talking to the workers. And I'm also a student at the University of Minnesota and Oxford College and uh, St. Kate. Oh, wow. So that's a, that's a lot of students in, in your district and probably a lot of residences. What, what, what's the reception like? What are people saying about Abdi Askar? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, some of them, they don't know me, and they're asking me about, uh, tell us your background, and I tell them how I get in Dickon Town. This is where I started in my, when I arrived in Minnesota, I started, accepted to Marshall, Minnesota, and then Wyndham, and then Dickon Town. And then I explained to uh, my education, my experience, uh, my family, and then they excited. Mm -hmm. And they said, hey, we would like to do. Some of them, when I visit to their homes, they said, oh, this is, you're the first candidate come to us for almost 20 years. Oh, wow. So they welcome to me, and they get more time, and they invite, they said, coming back more time. So I'm going all over the place. That's, that's uh, pretty great. So is this your first uh, state convention? Yeah, this is my first state convention that mm -hmm. I come, uh, because I was not a politician before. Mm -hmm. So since I'm running in office, this is the first one convention I ever go. Yeah, that, that's what we were talking about uh, last night, is just how we're seeing a lot of new faces here. There's a renewed energy, and uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, I don't know, in the Somali-American community, maybe they voted Democrat in the past. Uh, why do you think uh, more uh, Somali-Americans are not voting conservative, Republican? 
Uh, the mostly independents, the candidates, uh, as you know, that Senator Coleman, uh, the Somali community was well connected. And uh, because of the attraction, the way he welcomed them, the way he built a relationship. Uh, Senator, now I'm running a candidate. We are yesterday 42 Somalis in this building. Mm -hmm. uh, member to some of them are delegates, some of them are alternatives, some of them are guests. Uh, some of them also, even though go farther and help them, the other candidates like Jim Ambler, the Senate, they help them. Uh, Senator Juliana, wonderful. Uh, so you can see that now we're participating in a political process in America. Mm -hmm. Well, we're here today. We're going to be endorsing the next Republican governor candidate to run against uh, this guy right here, Governor Mark Dayton. Uh, there's a, a bunch of great candidates who are running for the endorsement. State Senator Dave Thompson, County Commissioner Jeff Johnson, former State Representative Marty Seifert from uh, Marshall, Minnesota, Rob Farnsworth, uh, he's running. Am, am I missing anybody who's... And, and I said, that, yep, State Senator Dave Thompson. A lot of great candidates, but a lot of people say uh, they're not very happy with uh, what Governor Mark Dayton has been doing with this seat. And what are you hearing? Uh, uh, are people in your district, uh, are they happy with the way the Minnesota economy is right now? Uh, I don't think so. A lot of them, they're happy with that because uh, two things. One is education and the second is for the housing. Uh, as you've seen that a lot in, in, in my district, is a student in, especially in Minneapolis, 50% are not graduating. So those students, they go on uh, drugs or tourism or they go on uh, traffic, sex traffic. Mm. So 24 cases now in a youth, uh, no one is not arrested. So the youth policy, they get very upset for that and at the same time for education. So those two things. So this year, 2014, that's why they need to change it. That's why they joined the party of the Republican Party to get a new Senate elected for from Republican, New Zealand elected for them, the government, the governor, and at the same time also to change a kid, Allison, to a Doug Daggett. Yeah, and you know, we heard uh, from Mike McFadden yesterday, he was instrumental in starting Cristo Ray, which is a, a, a school in Minneapolis, it's not a public school, uh, they have an alternative system, but very, very high graduation rates uh, for any inner city students, and uh, I know that school choice is one of your issues. Absolutely. And can you tell everyone just uh, what is school choice and, and uh, how would it benefit people in your district? Oh, absolutely. School choice is basically is very simple. What it means is that parents just control their children. They can send their children wherever they want it to go. If this next door school is not performing, they have a right to send them in Indian Prairie or Chaska or any place in Minneapolis that they see it's good for mm -hmm. their children. So that is what the school choice is. They give them a power for their parents so they know their children are successing. Not give them a chance and opportunity for the union teachers who are sitting 10 years and then they don't care about our children. So they, want to, they only take care about paychecks. Great. Well, this is uh, Abdi Askar, and uh, I've just been so excited and thrilled watching your campaign progress. And very briefly, can you tell everyone your website and, you know, if they can help you out, how can they do that? Uh, very simple that you go to our website. Our website is very simple. Vote for Askar, which means V for Victor, O-T, like a Thompson, E, and F, like a Frank, O-R, like a Rat, and then Askar, my last name, A, like a Apple, S, like a Sam, K, like Kick, A, and a rat like a rat dot com. This is great. Abdi, future of the party here. Thank you for uh, your time. Appreciate it. Great to see you. We still have yet to endorse a U.S. Senate candidate. There's a lot of folks walking around, if you see, with droopy eyes, some red eyes. A lot of us were up till 2.30, 3 in the morning here in Rochester at the Mayo Civic Center, uh, hoping to endorse a candidate. Didn't happen. Uh, the top two uh, vote earners right now are Mike McFadden and Chris Dahlberg. And uh, we just cast our eighth ballot, so we're going to see uh, if anything happens. Uh, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman made some news this morning because a flyer was distributed to the delegation. Uh, Michelle Bachman endorsed Mike McFadden, uh, causing a, 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 maybe a shift, but we'll see. We'll have to see when the results of the first ballot come in. So we just ask that you continue to join us. This is so exciting. We're going to have a new U.S. Senate candidate endorsed today, and God willing, we'll have a new governor's candidate endorsed today, and conservatives and libertarians and Republicans will be united in 2014. We are not going to have the same thing that happened in 2012. You can just feel the new energy here. You can see the new faces. People are ready to work. People are ready to do what it takes to bring victory in November. 
So I'm fortunate enough to be with the Minnesota State House candidate, great friend and brother, Joseph Blum. Joe, great to see you. Great to see you too, Tony. Yeah, so tell me your thoughts about the, the convention so far. Do you, do you sense that there's a difference between 2014 and 2012? Absolutely. The people here are committed. They're ready to work. They're ready to win. And they're ready to go out there and get something. They're ready to endorse a candidate today and see that endorsed candidate all the way through the primary and all the way to the general election. Yeah, so I was saying there's a lot of people walking around with uh, droopy eyes, myself included. We were up till uh, 2 3 in the morning trying to endorse a U.S. Senate candidate. Do you think we're going to see an endorsement today, Joe? I do believe we are. I do believe it's coming either to this ballot or the next ballot. Wow, that's, uh, that's pretty incredible. And do you have predictions as to who you think it's going to be? I think Dahlberg. You think Dahlberg's going to pull it off? I think Dahlberg will pull it off. Yeah. And uh, the other question we have, so we have to endorse a, a governor's candidate today. And there's a number of, of great candidates. I know uh, Scott Honor made an announcement he's not going to go for the endorsement. He announced that uh, State Senator Karen Housley is going to be his lieutenant governor uh, running mate. Uh, what are your thoughts on... Uh, the governor's endorsement. Are, are, are we going to see someone endorsed? And also, in your opinion, are we going to see Mark Dayton defeated in November? We are going to see someone endorsed. We are going to see Mark Dayton defeated in, in November. The question is, is whether or not the endorsement matters. I do believe the endorsement matters. At the same time, Kurt Zellers is a close personal friend of mine, and uh, I'm not going to say anything bad about his candidacy, and Kurt's going to the primary, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, as you know, I work for Rob Farnsworth, who's currently uh, in the battle for governor. We'll see how many ballots we can go, and uh, we're hoping for the endorsement today. And if it's not us, we'll see who's endorsed. And uh, I'm a endorsed Republican candidate, so I'll, uh, I'll support the endorsed Republican candidate for governor. Yeah, I have to say, we, we did have uh, Rob Farnsworth uh, on the show, and, and he's got a lot of interesting viewpoints. He, He's from the same area as, as Chris Dahlberg. Uh, I was also at our SD51 convention, BPOU convention, in uh, Egan, and he got a standing ovation there. Uh, are you seeing momentum picking up and, and people getting excited about Rob's campaign? We are seeing a lot of momentum. Uh, Rob is a full-time teacher, so unfortunately we weren't able to get him into the cities as much as we wanted to. Uh, we have a lot of outstate support. We have a lot of in-state, like in the city support too. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we're optimistic for today, but at the same time, at the end of the day, we're all Republicans and we'll support whoever gets endorsed. So Joseph Blum, running for the Minnesota State House of Representatives, uh, can you just tell everybody a little more about your district and the geography of it, and then also how can they get a hold of you? What's your website? Uh, my district is West St. Paul, Mendota Heights, Mendota, Lilydale, and South St. Paul. The geographical boundary is uh, Dakota County on the north, uh, 110 on the south, uh, with a little bit of Mendota Heights with the cemetery, uh, Resurrection Cemetery there. My district is a district that has voted Democratic for the past 30 some years. Um, last time we had a Republican there was Burt Mackesy. And it's time for change. It's time for me. I've seen a lot of positive reaction out from the community, and uh, I'm looking forward to November. And one thing I want to point out about Joe is Joe, Joe Blum is one of the most principled people that I know. You're probably one of the most principled people in this room, and there's a lot of principled people here. Uh, can you talk about if you're elected, when you're elected, how are you going to resist that special interest money, uh, some of those big uh, 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 windfalls that come in that, that really corrupt a lot of politicians. We hear a lot of complaints about that, but how are you going to fight back against that? Well, as you know, my faith is the most important thing in my life. And Tony, you know that uh, I need a lot of great people around me and I will surround myself with a good staff. I will begin my days with prayer, asking God for guidance, and uh, I will talk to my constituents very frequently. My door will be always open to my constituents. and. Uh, I will definitely make sure that I'm not listening to the special interests, but rather listening to the people who got me into the office and listening to the Constitution of the state of Minnesota and living my life morally. And I'm going to try my best to serve the people of West St. Paul, Mendota Heights, Mendota, Lilydale, and South St. Paul. If you need to get a hold of me, my website is joeblum.org. That's J-O-E-B-L-U-M.org. Yeah, we encourage everybody, go to joeblum.org, learn more about Joe. This guy is a grassroots principled, conservative, and he will serve the people of Minnesota well. Joe, thank you for your time. Thank you, Tony. It's a pleasure. Thank you. I'm here with former U.S. congressional candidate in the 2nd District, David Gerson. David, uh, thanks for uh, taking the time to talk. Absolutely. Thanks.
Can you uh, share your thoughts about uh, the convention so far, uh, the energy here? Do you feel like Republicans are united right now? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that uh, a lot of the message from the candidates has been about ensuring that we come together as a party. At the same time, there's I think one of the big questions that, at the convention is, are people going to honor the endorsement? Yeah. And what does that mean? How can we be leaders and bring, bring people into the party and come together if we're not going to honor the endorsement process? And I think as far as being able to build the grassroots movement and build the party, the endorsement has to mean something. And uh, I, I must say that you are, your actions meet up with your words because you ran honorably for the endorsement in the 2nd District and uh, I was there when you stood up in front of the entire Congressional District 2 delegation and uh, you conceded the race and you threw your support behind uh, your opponent there and can you talk about why that's important? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, it's, it sends a statement that uh, it is important what the activists think and gives them a reason to be, uh, become energized and involved in the process. And when people hear that someone wants to grow the party or that they care about the causes and you are important, but then I'm going to run anyway, and they hear that the bipolar message of we can't be attacking each other, but I'm going to take you to a primary. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It doesn't align with our views. It doesn't align with what we're saying, and so we need to ensure that we keep this endorsement process alive. It's something special here in Minnesota. It's a, a reason to ensure that your your voice is heard, and uh, it keeps us from uh, having Citizen United make it to where our political system is purely ruled by whoever can r raise the most money. You know, uh, when Tom Emmer gave his uh, his speech this morning, he mentioned about the, the greatest boom in American history being from, I think, uh, I can't remember the dates, from 2007 uh, back to Reagan's first term and talked about some of the economic growth that occurred at that time. And, and another message I heard is I think during that time, because times were so good economically, people stopped following what people were doing in Washington, D.C. And an incredible amount of spending went on, an incredible amount of, of borrowing went on, and Republicans and Democrats both being guilty of this. And uh, one of the issues of your campaign was the national debt, was spending, and I, I believe that a lot of people uh, feel your same passion in terms of those issues and monetary policy. And uh, my question is, uh, do you see an awakening amongst conservatives and libertarians and Republicans? Are you seeing a, a movement or an awakening towards the damage that's being caused to the value of the dollar and inflation and the national debt? I think really what it comes down to is uh, Republicans, we're not following our own platform of limited governments and at the federal level, constitutionally limited governments. And I think we have to internally look at ourselves and what our campaign was about is not that we're, we are Republicans. You know, I was running as a Republican purely to the platform and unfortunately our leadership has not been upholding our principles and our incumbents have not been voting our platform. And we know that Republicans have been leaving our party because they're tired of that lesser of two evils argument that I'm better than the Democrat. Maybe I'm not upholding our principles and our platform but I'm better than a Democrat, so you have to support me. And we know that our party's been shrinking because of that. And so I think that is uh, the grassroots of the party and uh, the true conservatives in the base are, are no longer accepting that lesser of two evils argument. And they're trying to hold our incumbents and our leaders to our principles and our platform and we know that we have to do that if we're going to grow the party. We have to have integrity. We have to redefine who we are as a party. And we know that it's as simple as the platform. It's obviously what Reagan talked about. Reagan purely talked about our constitutional limited government and this platform. And, and that is the message that we need. Well, David, we got to uh, we got to go in soon and, and see uh, what's going to happen with the uh, U.S. Senate endorsement, and then hopefully we'll be moving on to the governor's endorsement. But if you could just briefly let everybody know, because uh, you built a good name for yourself and a reputation, what's next for David Gerson? Well, I'm going to respect the uh, endorsement process. So uh, John Klein is our endorsed candidate. So what about uh, are you going to run for another office at some point? You know, I'm, I'm definitely. Uh, you know, we're. It, out of respect for what's happening, I'm going to stay mum during this election cycle.
But of course, you know, we want to keep this movement alive of getting people energized again and the conservative base back out there and participating and holding our, as, as our duty as Republicans, to hold our incumbents accountable to the platform. Sounds good, David. Thank you for your time. Thank you. The ninth ballot results were just announced. Mike McFadden made a big movement here in 53% of the delegate vote. Chris Dahlberg slipped down to 44%. I'm standing here with Danny Ekstrand, one of the youngest delegates on the floor. Danny, this is exciting, isn't it? Oh yeah, being here till about 2 a.m. and then coming back on three hours of sleep to continue voting, it's it's fun, but you know, no one else is going to do it unless we're here. Are you? Uh, what are you doing to stay awake, or do you just feel the energy you feel naturally awake? Oh yeah, I'm super tired. So we're you know downing the waters, down in the Mountain Dews, you know, <laughs> stuff to try and keep us awake, getting some sugar, and you know, trying to stay up and walking around in between voting. All right, so we're coming up on the the tenth ballot here. A lot of people say that this could be the ballot that ultimately decides the endorsement. Do you agree with that? I think it could. Mike Fadden has, you know, really stepped up his game after his last speech last night, and I think that swayed a lot of voters because it seemed really personal, and it came from him, and it wasn't very scripted, it, it seemed like. And so, I mean, if he doesn't get it on this next ballot, I think that enough of the supporters are behind him, where we'll continue voting until we have an endorsed candidate. Yeah, so the first ballot results that came out, it was 49, 49%, and then the second ballot of today came out, and it was 54 to... 44 uh, percent. There's a definite trend happening where Mike is gaining more and more support. So we're just going to have to wait and see. Wait and see what happens. Uh, it's exciting and uh, stay tuned. We'll talk to you soon. It's great to have Brad Carlson with 1280 AM, the Patriot here. Brad, how's your convention going so far? Hey, Tony. First of all, good to see you. Yeah, uh, you it is, uh, it's going great. I'm having a ball. I'm having a blast. Uh, I'm, I'm a political nerd, I guess. Uh, some are uh, exhausted, worn out. I'm still I'm, I'm uh, running on adrenaline right now, I guess you could say. So were you up last night till uh, 2 AM? Yes, sir. Yeah, I was here to the very end until they decided to uh, adjourn things. And uh, uh, I don't want to say I got a good night's sleep. Three hours is more like a long nap, but uh, back and uh, rare to go. You know, a lot of the, a uh, few of the governor's candidates and U.S. Senate candidates said that they're going to run in a primary no matter what the endorsement is. Some people get really upset by that. Others think, well, hey, this is America and they have every right to do so. What's your opinion? Is it healthy for the party to have competitive primaries for statewide races? Hey, you know, um, my personal preference is primary, specifically a June primary, get it done earlier, then we can focus on the general election. The way it's set up now, if candidates choose not to abide by the endorsement, you have a primary in August, and then you have to gear up and go three months hard, and it, and you've drained a lot of resources at that point. So my preference is to have closed registration, closed primaries, preferably in June, because you reach so many more voters. I mean, it's so, as we've seen in the past few conventions, in my opinion, it's easy to manipulate the delegate system to stockpile the delegates and get your preferred candidate endorsed. And unfortunately, that's not the most viable candidate in a general election because I like winning, Tony. That's that's the bottom line. We, we need to win more. So we're at the uh, 10th ballot for the U.S. Senate race. Uh, Mike McFadden, Chris Dahlberg. Are we going to see a winner emerge this next ballot? Uh, wow. You know, I after the 8th ballot, I didn't think so. But then McFadden made a huge jump, got over 50 percent, 53.4, I think, percent. Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know which way it's going to go. I mean, this would be the... Uh, uh, tenth ballot coming up, and after that one, if it's no endorsement, you know, do we vote to just go no endorsement? Uh, it'd be interesting to see. Do you think the Representative Michelle Bachman endorsement helped McFadden? Uh, you know, it's, it seemed to a little bit give him a little jolt. I mean, uh, I, I think it would have helped a heck of a lot more four years ago, but with Michelle Bachman being uh, kind of uh, on her way out and um, perhaps not as popular overall, but still very popular within the uh, Republican delegations, you know, because the most uh, hardcore grassroots activists are here. Uh, yeah, I, I think it did. I think it did. Well, we're going uh, to let Brad go. He's got a broadcast live on AM 1280, The Patriot. But, Brad, thank you so much. Good to see you, Tony. Thank yeah, you. you too. Mandy, this has been a pretty exciting day so far, hasn't it? It has been. So you were here yesterday all day? I was, yep. And uh, so where did you, uh, we're in Rochester right now, where did you come from? I came from Little Falls, which is central Minnesota. Okay, and you're uh, uh, part of the leadership in that area? I am, I'm the Morrison County BPOU Chair. And I also see that you're uh, a Marty Seifert supporter. I am, that's right. 
And, you know, the U.S. Senate endorsement has now gone from 9 a.m. yesterday and we're, what, 1.30, 2 o'clock today. Still no U.S. Senate endorsement. There might be one soon. Uh, but my question is, are the Seifert supporters going to stick around till 2, 3 in the morning tonight? Or if this goes well into Sunday morning, how committed are the Seifert supporters? The Seifert um, supporters are very committed. I personally have been a Seifert supporter since I began. This is my third state convention, and I supported Marty the very first time he ran for the governorship, and I plan to stick with him through the end of it. So what about uh, what about the other delegates in, in Morrison County and in other areas? Are you seeing the same type of commitment there? I am. We have a full delegation that's supporting him. And, uh, so you're, that's pretty uh, amazing. You're the BPOU chair of Morrison County, huge county, one of the most conservative and pro-life areas in all of Minnesota. Um, and pardon me for asking this, but how old are you? I'm 21. Okay, so you're 21 and you are a BPOU chairwoman. Yeah. How did you decide to get involved? Well, actually, the six years ago when I first got started, I realized I was going to have the opportunity to vote, and I wanted to support great candidates. And um, I started with the local level with uh, Senator Paul Gazalka, and then I worked my way up to the governorship. And New Marty was a great candidate, and I'm with him in the long haul. And uh, do you have any any other advice? Because not a whole lot of young people get involved in politics. Do you have advice for young people who do or maybe want to think about getting involved? Well, we are the next generation. If we don't step up, who is going to? And Ronald Reagan talks about that a lot, and he's one of the people I look up to. Well, sounds good, Mandy Heffron. Thank you so much, and uh, it's good seeing you. Thank you. Dan, Doc Severson, congratulations on the endorsement for Secretary of State. Very Thanks, exciting. Tony. Yeah, this is uh, very exciting, very energizing, and we got a good group that are just ready to go here. You ran uh, a few years back for the same seat. Uh, do you feel like that experience is going to help uh, bring you over the edge? Yeah, I think it's huge in terms of uh, name recognition. You know, we've run across the state uh, and we've gotten great support. Came within three points of winning the last time against an incumbent, Mark Ritchie. He's not running again. And uh, besides that, we've been doing some work in the inner city. I think that will have a huge impact, bringing the message of liberty, free, uh, free enterprise, and less government down into the, a lot of the communities who have the same values as their Republican values. Well, I was talking to uh, Abdi Askar. He was on yeah. our show uh, a few weeks back and had an interview with him today. And I was talking about just looking around the delegation and seeing the multicultural, yeah. diverse faces, the new faces of the party. Yeah. A lot of people credit your hard work for that and can you just explain a little more about what you've been doing the last four years in terms of bringing new people into the party yeah and, and it's been it's been extremely excuse me extremely rewarding because these are people who love America and they love the freedom they want a dream for their family they want something better they want a, a future and they're realizing that the Democrats aren't giving that to them. the Democrats are just kinda of keeping them where they're at keeping them you know suppressed and so I believe that as this message continues to go out, there's going to be a huge shift in Minnesota. And, uh, and it is what we have needed as a Republican Party to really start reaching out and embracing those people with the same values as we have and, and being friendly about it, not going after votes, going after relationships. It's interesting to hear uh, Abdi talk about some of the issues. Uh, one of the issues he talks about often is school choice. Huge. And more and more people are seeing in the inner city the failure of the democratic model of education. Is that something that you're hearing as well? Huge. Oh yeah, that's huge. In fact, when we start to talk to those, uh, those communities and those parents, uh, when, and you start to uh, talk about a future for their children, the education is the key, and they understand that. And they are in failing schools that are costing the taxpayer twice as much as it does out state per student and yet only 40 percent of them are graduating and what does that do to uh, a community that's trying to fight poverty it condemns them to more poverty and yet the same people who are in the legislature representing those communities send their kids to private schools and so they're denying their constituency the same privilege that they have put within themselves and uh, and that's what we're gonna push this next election cycle it is about freedom of choice it is about uh, empowering those people who need it it's immoral that we have a failing school system and we condemn those that can't uh, have the, don't have the resources to do that for their own children, condemn them to failing school systems. So we've got plenty of examples, whether it's Crystal Ray or, Place, or uh, Hope for the City or, you know, there's a number of other very uh, successful school models out there that are taking the very constituency that are failing in the inner city 
and graduating 100%, and they're doing it for half the price. And so it's kind of like they're beginning to understand that it's not Republicans don't hate them. We want to help them achieve the American dream. So I got to say before we go, congratulations on your grandchild. Uh, awesome. You and Kathy Joe are very blessed to uh, have such a gift. Well, Tony, thank you. This and is uh, first grandchild, this is our right? first, first grandchild. And, and uh, same to you. I know that you're building a family here. And it's pretty awesome. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, there's, uh, there's no blessing like the blessing of a child. No, it's huge. It's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Good seeing you, Doc. Good seeing you, Tony. I'll this is breaking news from the Republican Party State Convention. Chris Dahlberg has just requested an opportunity to address the convention. He's getting a standing ovation right now. Uh, usually what this means is he's going to give a concession speech. It looks like Mike McFadden is going to be the next Republican endorsed candidate. As you can see, people are on their feet right now. Uh, Chris Dahlberg is making his way up and he's about to address the convention. So this is big news after, uh, <laughs> after multiple hours of the convention. Uh, this is finally uh, coming to a conclusion here. And so uh, we'll watch and see what happens. But it certainly looks like Chris Goldberg is ready to concede. Wow, it's nice to have friends. Mike McFadden <laughs> is going to be the Republican a, endorsed candidate you know, this was part for of the, the U.S. Senate. First so of all, uh, congratulations this is, uh, this is to pretty amazing. Uh, Mike McFadden. He's uh, saluting Mike McFadden right now. Hey, Pat, how are you? You know, when I came in, I said that one of the things I'm going to do is stay clear and consistent. And I entered it into this saying, I'm going to abide by the endorsement. There's no gray about this. And I said, you know, I said, I'm going to fight for this endorsement. I did, right? He did. But what I also said is, if I lose that endorsement, and I don't like to lose, but I'm going to get behind that person that wins the endorsement. So I will. Wow. A true class act. Everybody respects Chris Dahlberg. Everybody respects Chris Dahlberg. The man is a true class act saying that he's going to get behind the Republican endorsed candidate, he's going to support him. Thanks so much. And I know we're, I know we're getting excited. I'm going to take a couple more minutes of your time. I know you want to get to the governor's race, right? <laughs> hey, and that's what we do here. This is part of the process, and this is great. You know, I want to just say to all of those out you that were fighting for me on the floor tonight and that have fought for me in the trenches on this campaign, I love you. You were just wonderful. We had some great times along the way, and we, boy, did we work hard. And you know, to the other campaigns out there, I think we developed some friendships. Rivalry friendships, but yes, friendships. You know, I'd like to finish on a note, if I can, just about sort of my philosophy for the Republican Party, because we are the party moving forward. You know, we're the party of individualism and self-achievement. You know, they talked about our nation as the nation of American exceptionalism. And that's what makes us so great. What makes us so great is that American spirit. That's what we're great about, right? And it's the United States Constitution that protects us for those liberties. And you know, we, we praise the American spirit. You know, we, we see the great benefits of this, of the individual and self-achievement. And unfortunately, too often on, our, on the other side, our friends there say, they're worried about it. They get concerned about it. We need government to check it. And we have to continually be constant and vigilant to catch that. You know, we need to work and fight for the freedoms and the opportunities that our kids have. That, you know, we're losing and we're slipping away. Yesterday, you know, when we, I started my, my remarks, I talked about my daughter Maya, my nine-year-old daughter Maya. And one of the things that she likes to do is she likes to uh, go put that, that picture up on the uh, refrigerator magnet. Well, you know, we're, we're turning to a nation where we have elected leaders that are telling us things like, you didn't make that. <laughs> we did, right? 
Well, I'm sure if Maya was here, she'd take exception with Mr. Obama. And she'd say, I beg your pardon, Maya did that. <laughs> I want to thank you. It's been a great honor to be here. And let's go on, and let's go on to win and defeat Al Franken. Let's go on to defeat Governor Dayton this fall. We're going to do it. We're going to get together, right? Yeah. All right. On to so victory. Yeah. That's Chris Dahlberg giving his concession speech finally after 16 plus hours of trying to get in the endorsed candidate. Chris Dahlberg, like a true gentleman, like a true Republican, has conceded the endorsement and he said he's going to throw his full weight, his full support behind the endorsed candidate who's going to be Mike McFadden. So exciting times here. We're making history here. Looks like Al Franken is going to be a one-term senator. Ladies and gentlemen, because we now have a single candidate, the body may move to endorse by rising vote. Here we go. I need a second. I've second. heard a second. All so in favor say endorse aye. Endorse by rising vote. Those Let's see who stands no. up here. The motion does prevail. Mike McFadden is going to be endorsed. All in support of endorsing Mike McFadden so for U.S. Senate, please So everyone who's going to support Mike McFadden rise. is going to stand up. Looks like the entire delegation, almost the entire delegation is uh, rising right now. The motion people is People are going to unite behind Mike, Mike McFadden, McFadden because people endorsed. are tired of the Democrat policies. They're tired of what Washington is doing to Minnesota and to this country. People are going to stand up and they're going to unite. They're going to do it. And then with that, I think they're going to uh, bring on uh, the U.S. Senate candidate, the endorsed candidate, Mike McFadden. He's coming up right now. So they're bringing him up right now. They're bringing him up right now. You can see on the uh, on the larger screens that Mike Fadden is coming up. This is pretty amazing. After all this time, after all this time, we finally have an endorsed candidate. So you can see him up there. Minnesota. Mike McFadden, he's up there with his family. I love you. And he's talking to. First, I am so honored to be your endorsed candidate for the United States Senate. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I humbly accept. You can see that Mike McFadden, as he's addressing the delegation, he's got his hand on his throat. He's been working the crowds. He's been shaking hands for hours and hours on end. I'd like to thank my fellow candidates who I've gotten to know Talk to so, so many well people where he doesn't even have, and have his so voice. Much respect for. And I want to give a big special thanks to Chris Dahlberg. What a great man and gentleman. Right now, McFadden, thanking Chris Dahlberg. Showing his appreciation. Chris, Chris has a great future in our party here in Minnesota. And I look forward to working with him in this campaign. And I'd like to thank all of Chris's supporters. He's a good man. I respect you so much. And I hope I have the opportunity to earn your support. Thank you.
I'd like to thank all my supporters, our supporters, everybody in this room. Without your help, none of this would be possible. I am so appreciative and grateful for everything you've done. Thank you. I'd like to thank my mom, Mary Loretta. I love you. Mary Kate. I'd like to thank my wife, Mary Kate. I love you. I'd like to thank all of my children. I love you. Thank you. My brother Tommy, love you, man. And I'd like to thank my team. I am so proud of you. You fought hard. You believed. I'm so honored to go into battle with you. And I look forward to the battle we have here through November. You see, this is not the end. This is not even the beginning of the end. It's only the end of the beginning. I look forward to taking the fight to Al Franken. We have a better vision, all of us in this room. We need to get back onto the road to growth and prosperity. We can do better. We know we can do better, and together, all of us in this room as a team will fight and we will win. In November, we will beat Al Franken. We will turn this back into a red state. We will win the governorship. We will take back the House. And I look forward to fighting for you and fighting with you, because we need each and every one of you in this room to go out to do everything that you do, because together we will win. We will beat the Democrats. We will take back our state. Once again, thank you for your support. I'm honored and humbled. God bless you. God bless Minnesota. And God bless America. There you have it. Mike McFadden is the Republican endorsed candidate for U.S. Senate. Now we're moving on to endorse a governor's candidate. Uh, there's a lot of excitement here. As I said, people have been up late last night, but they're ready to do it. We'll keep you in touch with everything that happens.